hey guys, today I'm going to share one of my favorite stories, The Brave Little Tailor. So let's begin. On a beautiful sunny morning, a tailor sat at his sewing table, happily working away. As he focused on his work, a woman walked down the street and called out, Fresh homemade jam for sale! Fresh homemade jam! That sounds delicious, thought the tailor, and he bought every last jar. The tailor was excited to enjoy the fresh jam, and so he found a loaf of bread to eat with it. It would. He spread the jam on the bread, looking forward to his a snack. Just then, he glanced at the clock and realized that his time was running short. He had to continue his sewing. The tailor left his jam and bread and went back to work. Soon, the sweet smell of jam caught the attention of some flies. As the tailor sewed, several flies flew over and buzzed around his plate. Hey, cried the tailor. Shoo, get away from my bread and jam. But the flies continued to buzz around. Desperate to get rid of them, the tailor took a piece of cloth from his work table and swatted at the flies, squishing them all. When the tailor lifted up the cloth, seven dead flies lay underneath. Oh, what an amazing feat! A real show of true bravery, he thought, very pleased with himself. The little tailor was so impressed by his own skill that he wanted others to know. He made a belt that fit around his waist and on the buckle he stitched the large number seven with an inscription below it that read seven in one stroke. Wearing his new belt, the tailor decided that it was the perfect time to go on an adventure. He looked around to see what he could bring with him but he only found an old piece of cheese which he placed in his pocket. As he stepped outside, he heard a bird rustling in the trees. He took it in his hand and put it in his pocket as well. Lovely. The little tailor followed the road up the mountain. Excited by the adventure before him, his steps were, his steps were light and nimble. When he arrived at the top of the mountain, there sat a giant. The little tailor bravely marched up to him and said, Hello dear giant, I'm looking for adventure. Would you like to join me? Seven and one blow, said the giant upon seeing the tailor's belt and thinking that the seven were men and of lives. <laughs> you must be very strong. Can you do this? He challenged, picking up a stone in his fist and squeezing the water right out of it. The tailor wasn't as strong as the giant, but he was more clever. Watch this, said the tailor, and he took the old cheese from his pocket and squeezed it until water dripped out. And the giant towering above him mistook the cheese for a stone. <coughs> Not wanting to be outdone, the giant challenged the tailor again. This time to see who could throw a rock the farthest. The giant picked up a stone and threw it almost out of sight. The tailor laughed and reached into his pocket for the bird, which the giant again mistook for a stone. A stone. When the tailor threw the bird, it flapped his wings and threw out and um, flew out of sight. Not flew out of If you're so strong, help me carry this. Tree, grumbled the giant. With pleasure, said the tailor. Here, I'll carry the branches. I wouldn't want them to scratch you. This seemed responsible enough to the giant, and so he turned around, picked up, picked up the trunk of the tree and carried it over his shoulder. 
The tail quickly scurried into the branches which giant couldn't see him. He smiled to himself for being so clever and sat hitting, hidden on a branch as the giant carried both the tree and the tailor. <laughs> Later when they came to a cherry tree, the giant bent a bench and offered it to a tailor. But the tailor was too weak to hold the branch down and were launched into the air. The giant excused him of not being very strong, but the tailor had a quick answer. I was avoiding hunter's arrows. Let's see you jump over the tree. The giant tried but got caught in the branches and it looked like once more that like the tailor out on him. You're so strong and brave. Come stay the night at my home, said the giant with a gleam in his eye. The tailor agreed. And soon they came to a giant's home where the tailor was shown an enormous bed to sleep in. He crawled in and curled up under the pillow. That night, when the giant thought that the sailor was up under the pillow, <laughs> when that night, when the giant thought the tailor was sound asleep, he took a heavy club and broke the bed with a single blow. That should take care of that pesky little man, he thought, not knowing the tailor was safe and sound under the pillow. The following day, the giant went into the forest to meet some of his giant friends. The giant had forgotten all about the little tailor. That is, until the little tailor appeared before them. The giants were so taken by surprise that they ran away in fear. The tailor laughed at the giants and then carried on. He worked for quite some time before he came to a courtyard of a royal palace where he decided to rest. He lay down and fell fast asleep. He was soon noticed by some people who read the inscription on his belt, seven and one stroke. They thought that the little tailor was a great warrior and soon even the king heard about the brave stranger. The king was very impressed and offered the tailor position in his army, which the tailor gladly escaped. expected. If you kill two troublesome giants in the woods, I will grant you my daughter's hand in marriage and half of my kingdom as a reward, said the king to a tailor. The king sent a hundred horsemen with the tailor, but when the tailor arrived at the edges of, at the edge of the woods, he ordered the horseman to wait for him there and entered alone. He found the two giants resting under a tree and threw acorns at their heads. Each giant thought the other was responsible for the blows. They became so angry, they fought each other and knocked each other out. out. The tailor returned to the horseman without scratch to show them the fallen giant. They were astonished. However, the king was not ready to grant Taylor his reward and asked him to prefer another heroic deed. A wild unicorn was loose in the woods and Taylor was to tame it and return it to the king. The tailor went alone in the forest and stood in front of a tree. And when the unicorn charged him, he jumped swiftly out of the way and when the unicorn and the unicorn thorn stuck into the tree trapping it there. The tailor patted the unicorn spoke to it gently to calm it and he freed it from the tree and rode it back to the castle. The king could hardly believe it. He made a third request of the tailor. This time the tailor returned to the woods to catch a wild boar. When he found the boar he taunted it. The boar charged at him and the pig Taylor ran into an empty barn nearby with a wild animal in pursuit. When the boar was safely inside, Taylor quickly slipped out, closing the, window, closing the door behind him and trapping the animal. Weary, the king had no choice but to grant to Taylor his daughter's hand in marriage and half his kingdom. One night after they were married, the princess heard the Taylor mumble in his sleep. This new fabric will make a wonderful jacket. The princess gasped and sat up in bed. Her movement wakened the tailor. When he realized that he almost relieved, 
be revealed that he used to be a simple tale writer than a hero. He prevented to continue mumbling in his sleep. A man who killed someone and went through to the a jacket of such fine fabric. fabric. The princess who had thought momently that she finally learned something about her husband's mysterious past rolled over and went back to sleep. And so with his short wits about him, the little tailor ruled as a good and clever king for the rest of his days. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed it.